in a moment, I'm going to ask you to bring that item over here and tell me what it is. Not yet. Now, bring it over here, tell me what it is. Also, it's a, a gravy warmer, an original Argyle invented by the uh, eponymous Scottish Duke. And what was he called? <laughs> Argyle. Oh, is that why it's called an Argyle? Who knows? What's its value? Its use value or its exchange value? <laughs> What's the difference? How long do you have? Uh, to fix an exchange value, we would need to know the socially necessary labor time required to produce this commodity. Jim. Where's Jim going? Ah, uh, there's always something. Love, money, cheese. So, is this an horse? No. Good. That means we can take a butcher's at its arse. You see how much silver they reckon we got here. <laughs> The value of any commodity is an entirely social characteristic. Uh, the contribution of the silver is arbitrary. All right. Since it's arbitrary, I'll give you one penny. Is that all? It's a family heirloom. Oh, you Scottish, then? Jawohl. <laughs> What's your name, then, son? Karl Heinrich Marx. A Jew? Ja. From a long line of rabbis, most of whom were also Jewish. It's my wife who's Scottish. What's your wife's name? Frau Jenny von Westphalen. She is the daughter of Baron Ludwig von Westphalen, whose mother was Anne Wishart, who was descended from the totally Scottish Earl of Argyle. Do you expect me to believe that a penniless German Jew married into the Scottish aristocracy? I'm not saying they were happy about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At our wedding, I was only invited to the reception. <laughs> Do you see what I did there? I picked it up and I put it on that shelf there. The stolen goods shelf. Because you've half inched this, ain't you, son? Morning, Len. What we got here? Comedian. We've met before, officer. Maybe. Maybe not. We policemen, we all dress the same. <laughs> My singular offence is to be poor. Am I to be arrested for that? No, no. Policing's new to us all. Says this Argyle is a family heirloom. It is my wife's inheritance. Does she know you've got it? Does my wife know that I am pawning her inheritance? Of course not. <laughs> my first volunteer. I'm going to arrest you. <laughs> oh! German teeny. Does anybody know where he lives? Dean Street. I don't know the number. Do you have a name? Monsieur Rambos. No, mate. He's German. Mark. I'll pay you all tomorrow. Jenny, come on. What's all this? You got my letter? I'm here. It's Carl. <laughs> it's more. Well, of course it's more. Everything's more. Oh, what a relief. Oh, yes, Paris. <sighs> you must be exhausted. No, no, to be speaking German again. If I had to roll one more French R, I swear I'd spit my teeth out. You found us all right? Yeah, it's a strange place, Soho. Churches and brothels side by side. <laughs> Well, they're both offering the same thing, heaven. <laughs> One for eternity, the other for eight minutes. What are you doing? Packing. I'm leaving him. But you can't. I have to go. But he needs you. Well, what about me? 
What do I need? Very well, to hell with the man you love. I didn't sign up for a life of bread and dripping without the dripping or the bread. I steal coal, Freddy. I'm a bloody baroness and I steal coal. Well, I imagine you do it with great style. Mm. I can't live like this. The only reason the bailiff hasn't taken these dresses is because they were in hock until an hour ago. Piece by piece, item by item, I'm reduced. And soon I'll be nothing. You can't leave the children. Well, Foxy has Nim. He thinks she's his mother. And Kiki's at school. She doesn't need me. You and more just We need... can't just do anything. We don't talk. All right. What's he done? He's given up. On what? Everything. And he stopped going to league meetings. Well, he stopped going to the league, which he runs. I've negotiated commissions for him, and Meissner in Germany has signed for the book, but he's not writing. And now this. What is it? His letter, applying for a job on the railway. Brilliant. It only takes one intellectual to bugger up a railway. <laughs> and no one's going to put him in charge of a train. He won't get past the interview. Oh, he'll have an answer for everything. Do you have a criminal record? Not in Canada. What was your first job? Rejecting Feuerbach, Hegel, and God. He won't get an interview. No one can read his handwriting. He knows that. He's asked me to scriven for him. I've refused. I can't. Be the wife of a railway worker. <laughs> Whose knock is that? Nim. Oh, ha! Ha, ha, ha! My dear Nim. General! The intellectual's housemaid of choice. What? No kiss? I don't know where your lips have been. On my face. And where's your face been? Paris. Exactly. How's Mary, General? Uh, Mary is in rude health. Thanks for asking. And her sister, Lizzie? Even ruder. <laughs> Was it your life ambition to live unmarried with two Irish sisters in a worker's cottage in Manchester? Not Manchester, no. God, I'm never living up north again. Hacking? Did you get anything? Flour, coal, sausages. Sausages without money? Well, there's a butcher in Camden. Has a thing for desperate lady emigres. A thing? His penis. <laughs> Which one followed you? Uh, him. One eye, two chins, no neck. There are more spies in Dean Street than there are whores. Doc Schmidt sketches them. Well, they can't touch us, the spies. Well, we're all right. We're political refugees. We're free. In England, yes. So thank God for England. If you step one foot back in Germany, your brother would lock you up and throw away the door. Don't call him my brother. Then what do we call him? The Prussian Minister of the Interior. Oh, the arsehole. <laughs> Has folks eaten? He wouldn't. So is that a no? He wouldn't eat a thing. What, that last drop of soup? I tried. My child would not eat. Well, let me have a go. More. Ah. Mudra! General! Oh, this is not a good time for me to acknowledge how industrially overjoyed I am to see you. But I am. English, Constable. Constable painted the hay wing. Three stripes. Sergeant. And surely can see bitter. I'd love to, but I don't drink on duty. <laughs> What's your name, ma'am? Deine Name. Ah, Jenny von Westphalen. And you, sir? I am her husband. My name is Friedrich Engels, <clears throat> and I kept my maiden name when we got married. <laughs> and you, miss? Was weiß ich? Are you all German in here? Uh, yeah. What can we do for you, Sergeant? I don't have eyes in the back of my head, so maybe you can help. Oh, well, uh, um, I'm, uh, I'm afraid that uh, I can't help you with that. I don't have eyes in the back of my head either. Was haben wir falsch gemacht? Liebling, mach dir keine Sorgen. Looking for a thief. This one's dark, hairy. Talks gibberish. Hat er einen Namen? Uh, yeah, do you have a name? Sergeant Savage. For the thief. Charles Marx or Monsieur Rambos? Liebling, was tut er jetzt? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, my wife wants to know if you are licensed to search private property without a warrant. Don't know. Law enforcement, early days, it's all up for grabs. 
They're standing up here to dry. Their pencil. Nasa bleicht it. Uh, wet pencil? <laughs> <laughs> What's in here? Uh, mein Sohn schläft da drin. Our son is asleep in there. We'll see if that's true. Yes, he's still asleep. Sie haben das Kind aufgeweckt. Oh. Soll ich zu ihm gehen? Ja, ja, danke. Idiot! What did she say? Uh, she said that uh, maybe the idiot made it up onto the roof. This villain may be highly dangerous. So if you see him, approach him, knock his lights out, and come get one of us. Au revoir. Clever thing to do <laughs> to a loving friend, husband, and helped him on <laughs> You didn't look right to my letter from last week. So depressed was I by the industrial scale of negativity. Industrial and all its cognates is this month's favourite word. Oh, Jennikin, we're not supposed to be talking. I was talking to him. Oh, she's packing again. Where's my damned wine? Bordeaux in my pocket. Well, shut him up, go, 46. D'accord. <sighs> Courtesy of the Philistine, my father. I write a good letter, I cry in ink. <sighs> Drink before you go, darling. Wet the separation's head. <sighs> More, please. Oh, it's all for show. I was wrong. It's one great big open air asylum. <sighs> but still, without French women, life would not be worth living. Present company. Insulted. <sighs> Can we stop the cabaret? Woman has cried wolf before. I'm not crying wolf, I'm going. She's not adapted at all well to abject poverty. Ha! Yeah. Back in Trier, in the von Westfalen mansion, she had her own feathered four poster. You know, I shared a small double with three siblings. Never slept on my own until I married her. In his inward-looking universe, where every observation is fed by a prejudice in favor of the sole inhabitant, the needs and feelings of other human beings serve only to magnify and distort his bloated sense of personal torment. <sighs> she wanted to give that speech at our wedding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a typical Prussian affair. Military uniform, guard of honor, firing squad. <laughs> so she's packing again because I didn't pay the doctor's bill for Foxy. I don't have any respect for prosaic imperative exigency such as paying bourgeois tricksters like the specialist Dr. William Whitehead, uh, who incidentally is suing me. You know, the Hippocratic Oath, don't give credit. You know, thus, I am seeking paid employment with the inventor of the perforated ticket stub, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Jenny tells me she's landed a contract with Meissner for the book. So I'm a business now, am I? A manufactory of words. And Polyakov and St. Petersburg. <sighs> Russia? What's wrong with Russia wanting the book? A book about capitalism. Russia's never had capitalism. There's more chance of a proletarian revolution starting in Windsor. <laughs> Polyakov will pay in advance. She wants me to turn revolution into money. Does the book have a title yet? <sighs> Die Volkwirtschaft Scheiße. The economic shit. I'm inclined to drop the definite article. Economic shit. <laughs> you like it? Five years, and all you've got is that title. I have taken some long craps in my time, but that <laughs> takes the biscuit. You're wasting your time. But God, who? Although you killed him, God put you on this earth to explain capitalism. I'll explain capitalism. The railway pays 15 shillings a week, the rent's only eight. And what are the proletariat complaining about? We'll have a surplus of seven bob to spend on claret and cigars. Food! More! Oh, I shall be a great railway clerk, maybe the greatest ever. When I'm gone, they'll build a huge statue of me outside Paddington Station. <laughs> the railway it is. Guido Fortima! Daddy! One day, son, all my debts will be yours. <laughs> Say hello to Uncle Freddy. Hello. Hello, little fella. I'm big and strong now. <laughs> Can you be a horse, Daddy? <gasps> I am a horse. 
climb aboard Sir Foxy. Only you can tame this bucking stallion. Ha! Stallion! No! Put the crop on him, Sir Foxy. You can't tell you make a meal. His throat is red raw. Daddy's going to drive the train. That's right, Foxy. I am going to drive a train. Hmm? Then we'll have all the food and all the doctors we need, won't we? Doc Schmidt is coming to see him later. Oh, are you still here? Foxy, darling, Mummy's going away for a little while. Will you say goodbye to Mummy? I don't want you to go, Mama. Are you looking for someone? There's a hackney cab coming for me. Oh, is your lover stumping up the cab? Excuse me. Yeah, Villy. August Villy. August is not my lover. He's only doing what all men do, pursuing the worm that lives in every marriage. Johann August Ernst von Willig and Johanna Bertha Juli Jenny von Westphalen. They could have had the longest wedding invitations in Prussian history. <laughs> Cigar. Never known to refuse. Yeah. From a shyster Polak in Hoban. One and six a box. That's eight pence, cheaper than my usuals. And so every time I smoke a box, I'm saving eight pence. If I can smoke three boxes a week, I can live off my savings. <laughs> They're execrable. Oh, I'm glad you like them. There's a league meeting tonight. Tonight? And he won't go, will you? Oh, he'll go. He'll speak. Do you know Emmanuel Barthelemy? He's come over from France. Uh, Looney Manny, yes, of course I know him. He's as mad as a spoon. As a child, he was bitten by a dog. He was all right. But the dog died of rabies. <laughs> Marx and Engels. Engels and Marx. <laughs> My wife's packing. She's going to Italy. Genoa. Of course I know her. She's my wife. Oh. Marks and Engels. Engels and Marks. Daddy's silly. The Barthelemy and Villig. That's the double act we should be worried about. August Villig. He couldn't start a revolution. Can't even stop my wife when he's been trying for ten years. Fifteen. I gave him five off for appalling behaviour. No, is anyone listening to me? For our people here, the refugees are tolerated. But Barthelemy, well, he's different. He's unstable, he's unpredictable. He's friend. And he's not on his own. He's brought the League of the Just with him. Is this true? Yes. Those bloodthirsty fanatics. He'll start an inferno and then leave. And the English will blame us and we'll suffer the consequences. Will I be a train, Foxy? Yes! Yeah. yeah! Well, there is trains the same as his horse. <laughs> More... You know you must speak at the meeting tonight. If the, if, if the League of the Just are here, it's because they can smell weakness. They know you've stepped aside. Excuse me, General. All aboard. Oh, boy, he's not well. Stop it. We don't stop till Doncaster. Oh, give him to me. <gasps> Prussian housemaid on the line. More. Write something for tonight. I'll read it. I can't write. I can't sit down. Boils. Boils? I have boils on my ass so big that they have asses of their own <laughs> with boils on. He lances them himself with a razor. Yeah, but because my loving wife refused. You know, Handheld mirror, razor arm through the legs, slit the bastard, clean the mirror, go again. You know, he has to stand in the reading rooms of the British Museum. People think he's an exhibit. General, go and flag her a hackney, will you? Enough, just enough. Now, I am going to go and buy us a leg of lamb. We are going to eat together and we are going to talk. Is that agreed? Doc Schmidt. Oh. A German doctor. And comrade. Oh, Frau Marx, comrade Nim. <laughs> Engels! Oh, good to see friendly faces. Well, good to see faces. I've administered three enemas today. <laughs> He's in the bedroom. Why is every revolutionary emigre in London constipated? My theory is they're all suffering under the sheer intellectual strain of understanding your prose, Herr Marx. <laughs> How's your cock? Um, it's fine. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Cleared up. <sighs> uh, yes, it's like you again. <laughs> Your secret's safe with me. <laughs> Coming to the meeting. Certainly. That arrogant bastard won't come. I'm working on it. Three new spies today. 
uglier than the last lot. I had to sketch them at intervals just to keep my lunch down. I have a new theory. The Prussian Minister of the Interior. My brother, don't be polite, Gertie. He wants revenge on Moore for marrying you. He calls it the Trier Incident. I sympathize. Not only did his sister marry a penniless Jew, but a penniless Jew intent on destroying the Prussian monarchy. <laughs> Who the patient calls, think of the fees. Oh, but you don't pay, do you? No. Mm. Any change in symptoms? His cough's harder. Right. <coughs> Moore, I need to speak to you. Alone. He's not important. I love you too. No. No. Uh, who is it? It's me. Ah, Heschlam. <laughs> Most felicitous state, you comrade Nim. Hello, Conrad. <laughs> and her angles, an additional pleasure of the most joyous kind. It's good to see you, Shram. <laughs> A good day to you, Herr Dr. Marx. <laughs> I'm not in here. I apologize. Oh, forgive my presumption, born as it is, of enthusiasm and warm fellowship. He stopped coughing. Dr. Schmidt just picked him up. Madame Marx. Radiance has found a new face and calls itself Madame Marx. Conrad, how nice to see you. Doc Schmidt needs more honey for the syrup. I'll get it. So, Shram, what news of the cycle? Oh, uh, since Herr Marx did me the unfathomable honor of appointing me as his successor editor of the new Rheinische Zeitung, I have been working ceaselessly on the relaunch. And you have proofs in addition to show us? Which you can leave on the table. I have not yet an edition, sir, but I have made progress on the relaunch title. Oh, ho, I'm all in. Indeed, sir. And I dare to hope that you will heartily approve the organ which I am honored to edit, was named by you in a stroke of unparalleled genius as successor to the original Reinschutz cycle. The new Rheinische Zeitung. <laughs> I have been touched, I hope, by my own muse in humbly suggesting that the London edition should be relaunched. Oh, for trespasses <laughs> upon eternity. What is your suggested title? The new, new Rheinische Zeitung. <laughs> new, new. No, no. Shoot. Hey, Dr. Marx, it is as a title of developing work in progress. There is more. I have other suggestions. No, you don't. In fact, I have six <laughs> alternative titles Get I can out. show you. If I had a choice to get rid of Shram or my boils, I'd keep the boils. He worships me. I can't bear it. You love it, worship. Besides, you appointed him. Yeah, never make editorial appointments when completely pissed. Yeah. How's Foxy? Crew, continue with the borax. And the honey. Coat the back of the throat. If he won't tolerate that, coat the tongue. I'll try it now. I'll let him sleep a little and then I'll do it. Aha! She's staying. I need to eat. And then I'm leaving. Lamb, roast potatoes, parsnips, butter. Anything else? A bit of foie gras. Or pate de campagne. Both. <coughs> Thank you. Well, Marx. You know the League of the Just have sent over a contingent from Paris? Let the lunatics run the asylum. And allow those hotheads to take over? Look, will you do the door tonight? Yes, but I don't know the European membership. Well, they're all members. We have a list. They shot the King of Prussia two days ago. Yeah, we know. He survived. But now they're over here with designs on Queen Victoria. That would be the end for us, Moore. What is it that's keeping you away? I'm going to drink a pint in every pub on Tottenham Court Road. Oh, dear, you are an asshole. And I know about assholes, my God. Each name has a number. If someone gives their name, ask them for their number. Thank you. More, I beg of you, for those comrades who died in 48, please come. Cheerio. You should be ashamed. I have a far bigger task ahead of me. There are 18 pubs on Tottenham Court Road. Look, Carl, we must talk. All we ever do in this house is talk. What is it? What? Kiki, please be upstanding for the Emperor of China. I saw Uncle Freddy in the street. Is he staying? He'll stay for dinner. He's paying for it. I've learned a new piece by John Field. <gasps> English music. 
John Fields is Irish, Daddy. The Irish are English. Act of Union, 1801. No! Keep playing! I'm not beginning to sympathise with cuckoos, the Swiss ones who live in clocks. Who is it? Mr. Grabbiner! Oh, the bailiffs! Mr. I was only saying to my trouble and strife this morning. I spent more time with that Mrs. Marks than I do with her. <laughs> Take a seat. Thank you. Who is it today? <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Gertrude Price, the landlady. <laughs> the rent never sleeps. Oh, please, that was our bon Gucci. What does your husband do all day? You can't find work in London. You must be neither use nor ornament. The landlady, anyone else? Mrs. Eileen Wilson, piano lessons, unpaid. Well, she teaches my daughter Irish scrapings, and then she has the nerve to sue. It won't happen again, because the piano's going. Hey. Let's... Dada! Off. Piano, 15 shillings. It's a broadwood. 15 shillings and sixpence. <laughs> you English can take the bread from out of our mouths. Keep... Over me, you can't take our culture. Mozart? Mm. Nah, Beethoven, over 67. Mama, my bed! Oh, no, better leave the bed. He's not well. Take, uh, take these dresses. A shilling each. The bed, two shillings. Do you not have a heart? No, I'm a bailiff. Oh, please, wait, 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 wait. I have a silver piece. An argyle. It's very, very valuable. It's solid silver. And uh, in here. Nim, it's gone. Oh, my God, no! Oh, oh, where is it, Ma? Take the bed, lads. Ma! shilling a month to the council. Uh, but, uh, the Velks uh, are yours. Your husband is a fisherman. Yeah, fuck off. Cowans are barking. They give me 30 pints of Welsh for the morning and I'll get sixpence for every pint I sell and a tuppenny penalty for every pint I don't sell. For the hoisting. No, stop. It's already too complicated. What? Wakels, Welks and hoisting. Oh, come here. No. I have an important and unfinished pub crawl to continue. I'll see you there. Who's that? Well, let me introduce you to my own personal spy. Good evening, Helmut. Evening, Herr Marx. This is my tailor, Gottfried Schnitzel Gruberlankenlein. Well, it looks like Friedrich Engels to me. So that explains the short sleeves. Red Lion, you going to the league meeting tonight? No, I've seen the light. I've given up revolution. I start work on Monday with Great Western. The railway? Yeah, I tried to change the world. I failed. But I will transform Paddington Station. You know, tell your boss, my brother-in-law, he needn't worry about me in the future. He can focus fully on his halitosis. Hmm? Off he pop. The red line's this way. The king's head is this way. Well, you've got no money for drink unless you've got cash for the argyle. Not a penny from the pawnbroker. So you still have the Argyle, then? I don't have money, and I don't have the Argyle. You do know how pawnbroking works. <laughs> She's furious. Just let me know what happens at the meeting. Thames Hoist! Cry for what? Thames Hoist! Uh, are they, uh, good hoisters? Put it this way, my husband had five last night, and three of them worked. Thresh 
Fascinate, I can act it, but I can't leave. Foxy's ill. Of course she can't leave. What does Kiki think? She hears us arguing. Does she say anything? Look, Kiki's not even listening. It's just shouting. But more needs to be taught a lesson. Teach him one, then. How? I don't know. Would you be safe at Villix? At Algus Villic? It's not just one room. He has a whole suite. Well, then it could be one night. Moore's lesson. Would that work? I think one night would be enough. And you know I'd look after the children. Jenny? I'll see you in there. Why didn't you come? The bailiffs took everything. I would take you with nothing. Where is he? I don't know. He uses you. <laughs> For what? Money from your family. They've stopped giving. Is he coming tonight? He said not. Then we can make progress. Are you with us? I don't know what you plan, but I will listen. You could stay with me tonight. August, I, I... I exist on hope. It's how love works. <laughs> Margs told me he would be late. Oh, is there something more urgent than the overthrow of the monarchy? Comrades, comrades! Let Engels speak. Engels, are you running the Marx party? Yeah, comrades, tonight we meet after the assassination attempt on the King of Prussia. And Queen Victoria is next. Comrades, comrades! Meet the fox. Escaped from the galleys only last week. Emmanuel Barthelemy. <laughs> <laughs> And he kisses like a horse. <laughs> Monsieur Dunn, bonsoir. I am, how you say, prêt. Ready. I am ready. Prêt. Ready. England is prêt. Ready for revolution. And our weapon, it is a technique. 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 Le technique is le terrorisme. C'est quoi? Terror. The terror. Just terror, no definite article. Terror! We kill, always are. At random. Police, soldiers, their wives. Dans la rue. In the streets. Dans la gare. In the stations. Dans les étangs. In the small lakes. In the small lakes, en avant. Encore, always are. At random. We kill, at random. Ici, voilà, en face. Here, there, and opposite. Encore, always are. At random. At random! Oh, 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 oh. Look, there is a time for violence. Again, speaking. The founder member of the League. Kill Queen Victoria and the English will turn against us. Though I'm not against violence. And I will be there when that time comes fighting beside you. But we are few. And the English workers love their Queen. They will not join us, they will hate us. Yeah, we can only win on the street. For the street. For the street. We are not ready. When we are ready, when? I am prepared. No! The English proletariat are ready, they just need leadership. An act to fire this nation out of its complacency. A spark. Kill. Always are. You killed a policeman in Paris. Always are. What good did that do? Monsieur Marx. Yeah, voila! It got you ten years on the galleys. Comrades, do you know what ten years on the galleys is? It's a fuck of a lot of rowing. <laughs> You're drunk, but not insane. So, August Villick, this is your big idea, to use this French attack dog as a start. A march to fire Europe. And we will all die in the fire. Have you seen the British Army? They're a machine, a mindless, grinding machine that would crush us. Yeah, they will, they'll destroy us. Comrade Marx, have you spoken? Comrades, we have an opportunity here. Fate has brought us to England, to this advanced, industrialized society with a vast city-living proletariat. 
oppressed, exploited, ripe to be educated, which will bring them to us. Violence will only turn them away. Forty-eight was a lesson. And only idiots do not learn. And are we idiots? Yeah, most of us are not. So what is the lesson? Time. Which was invented just down the road here in Greenwich only three years ago. <laughs> is on our side. We use this time to prepare. And to be ready. Ready. Prêt. Ready for power. For there will be a moment in the future, a moment, when the markets have crashed. The banks do not open their doors on this day because they are bust. The money has eaten itself. And on this day, there will be a beautiful void. And truth coalesces around a void. And that void will be filled with the universal truth that every man and every woman has the right not to be exploited by any other man or woman. Yes, yes, yes. And, and on this day, the soldiers will not have been paid. The police will not have been paid. And without wages, they will not defend capitalism. So we will not have to break down the doors. They will give us the keys and we'll walk in. And all... Class antagonisms will be swept aside and the proletariat will be the ruling class. Now, not the ruling class, there'll be no classes. No. <laughs> and every man and woman will be equal. And we will have a socialist association in which the free development of each is the free development of all. And we will have a more honest and just way for our species to live. Yes. No, 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 listen, listen. Change cannot happen without violence. Well, when will the economic crash come? Tomorrow, but not today. We're sick of waiting. We're not waiting. We're making preparations for that day. But we are soldiers. Your friend, the cotton lord, Herr Engels, was there on the barricades in 48. Where were you, Marx? Where were you? In the pissing rooms of the British Museum. Yeah, there are voices within our movement which would like nothing more than to see Europe burn. These sirens offer you death. An abattoir where you are the meat. Jewish coward! Oh, coward, no, Jewish, yes, like Christ. You think he is Christ? I have news for you. I am Christ! Marx is a coward! Well, yeah, debatable, but I'm not an idiot. You calling Billy an idiot? No, I said I'm not an idiot. Unlike me. All right, if you insist, I'm not an idiot, unlike you. Who's he calling an idiot? Are you calling me an idiot? You are an uneducated, priapic, Prussian prick of an idiot. Priapic? Always prepped, you know? <laughs> do you accuse me of something with this woman? I do. What? Of my honour. Yeah, what of my honour? She's not this woman, she's my wife. I can speak for my own honour. If your honour exists, it has no blood, no substance. Unlike the lives of the men and women in this room, which you, with unbound profligacy, would piss away on your own vain, narcissistic fantasy of a peacock's death. As a gentleman, I demand satisfaction. I shall await you at dawn on Hampstead Heath. A gentleman has a right to protect his honour. Choose your weapon, Marx. Uh, the pen. Pens at dawn. What? what? Debate. Ideas, rhetoric. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> be there, dog, or I will come for you. Oh, I'll be there, likewise, dog. More, just go home. Hey, Dr. Marx, please, may we return to the business of the league? Yes, comrades, this is not intelligent. Jenny? <laughs> you stole from me. The old fire. No, I can get that back. Don't let him fight in a duel. He will be killed. Jenny! Um, uh, comrades, remember, 
uh, tickets for the German Workers' Educational Society Ball on Saturday at the Huguenot Hall are selling fast. <laughs> See me or Doc Schmidt. Society. More enough! Write it down, preferably in a book. You wanted to explain, you bugger. I just wanted to know why we've stolen this gate. It's metonymic, a symbol. It's a bloody heavy symbol. <laughs> Society was stable. Hmm? Exchange and barter were the norm. But then the Phoenicians, you know, sick of you know, slipping a goat into your back pocket in order to buy a pint, <laughs> introduced a commodity of universal exchange. Gates! Yes! Money! Yes, but why have we stolen the bastard gates? Because there comes a time in every man's life when he's just got to nick a gate for a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> How much would that pawnbroker on Berwick Street give you for a gate like this? Oh, fuck all. Which yeah. is twice as much as he gave you for that silver argyle, eh? Oh, <laughs> How did you know about the argyle? I guess. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going. I don't mind being arrested for sedition, but drunk in charge of a gate? No, no. <laughs> Doc, you're the best of men. Comrade! Comrade! I love you much more than that rich arsehole. Well, who's a rich arsehole? <laughs> you. You fucking cotton lord. Hmm? Airmen and Engels. Oh, I see. And which one of Airmen and Engels do you think is me? Oh, tough one. Engels? No. Or Airmen. Your Airmen. Right, in Airmen and Engels, I am neither Airmen nor Engels. Well, I don't understand. I'm not my father. When I worked in Manchester, I was a wages clerk. The wages clerk does not get his name on the chimney. Don't give me that. I drink fine wine. And a hunt. And I've got a hunter. But only because I write begging letters to a father I detest is a philistine. And I pack each one with lies and false affection. I write him begging letters too. Well, my father? Yeah, twice a week. I explain to him that I'm your best friend and I tell him I love him. Does he send you money? No, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking a piss. Piss! I knew there was something I had to do. Yeah. Oh, God, I hated Manchester. I'm never going back. Marx and Engels! Engels and Marx. You're pissing higher than I am. That is because you are an intellectual and I am a machine for converting beer into piss. <clears throat> Oh, let me see your cock. Well, no, stop looking at me. We're going to have this conversation in profile. Really? I've known you since Paris, 1844. I've never it's seen it. It's a perfectly normal Prussian penis. Oh, you're using two hands. Oh, you've got a cock like a horse. <laughs> There's a peeler. There's a peeler. There's a peeler. peeler. Evening, lads. Uh, good uh, Good evening, Constable. <laughs> and what we got here? Gate. No, uh, officer, it's I can't explain. My gate. And where do you live? I live behind this gate. <laughs> so when you go for a drink, you take your gate with you? Doesn't everybody? <laughs> I apologize for my friend. So this address here on the front is your address. Yeah, vote. What is it then? Number one? No. Nope. Two? Three? 56? Officer, we'll, we'll put the gate back. 74! Patrick's Roman Catholic Church, Soho Square. That's this church here, and that'll be the old. I bloody told you we were going around in circles. Lads, lads, lads. I'll be back in half an hour. Uh, uh, thank you, officer, uh, for using your discretion and not hitting us. Yeah, well, I've been on a course. <laughs> I 
will not let this duel happen. No, I'm going to kill him. Oh. My wife walked out of the red line with him in front of all of Europe. Willick may love Jenny. Jenny does not love Willick. Why she went off with him? Who knows? I've starved our marriage. I've killed it every day with a thousand penurious indignities. And she's a bloody princess. I can't expect her to live like this. She'd have been better off with you. Yeah. What? <laughs> yes. You said she would have been better off with me. I said yes, because she would. Because I would have given her what she wants. A pony. But it wouldn't have been enough. Two ponies. She wants you. But I'm a disaster area. I'm the opposite of King Midas. Everything I touch turns to debts. <laughs> I've applied my mind to the analysis of political economy, and I can see that history is determined by the economic relations between the classes, and I know that if I can communicate this to the world, it will bring understanding and change, but I can't pay the fucking butcher. I'm defeated. Brutalized. Brutalized? Yes, brutalized. You're not brutalized, you bourgeois prick. <laughs> you just call me a bourgeois prick? Brutalized? Seriously, you can't use that word. Oh, you're the word keeper now, no, are you? If you want to see brutalized, go to Manchester. Oh, yes, I read your book. I couldn't put it down. <laughs> Fuck the book. Well, I'm sorry for reading I want you to smell it, and I want you to wretch it up. I know that... You don't know anything. A, a mile from where Mary lives, there is a courtyard. I have never seen such a concentration of degradation, sickness, and filth. There's 50 families. One toilet. Ten houses. The yard overflowed with piss and shit, human shit. And the kids, they play in this filth. Barefoot. And the parents of these children, they're not there. No, they're in the mill all day, every day, utterly consumed by a task that is regimented and repetitive and the noise. You can't hear another human voice. An existence more unnatural it cannot be imagined. They are brutalized. And unlike you, they've got no choices. They've got no prospect of escape except death. And if you had ever been inside a mill or a manufactory, you wouldn't dare to use the word brutalized to describe your own life. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a prick. You're a selfish, solipsistic prick. And if you don't write the economic shit, if you get a job, if you get killed in a duel, then and what about those people? Because they need you. I, I'm a beta plus. Now, I can observe, but I can only write down what I see, but you're a fucking alpha, you prick. You're a bona fide fucking genius because you can do the other thing. You can do the, the, uh, the analysis, the unlocking, the, uh, the reveal. All right, all right. I'll make a research trip to Manchester. It's good. Brutalized. What an asshole. Now, come on. Come and help me put this gate back. to sleep and then your mum will be here so 
And then why are my things strewn all over the floor? Because the bailiffs didn't take the floor. Oh, yeah. Give me a cigar. I've only got the Polish fireworks. Well, I like those. I like the smell. <laughs> We've so much in common, Lincoln. <laughs> Where's the Argyle? If you take Jenny's side in this, I'll not have a friend left in the world. I'm not going anywhere. That's what I need. Unconditional love. In industrial quantities. Where's the Argyle? Oh, hello. If you die tomorrow... <laughs> Why would I die tomorrow? The duel? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Mm. Oh, I get it. If I die tomorrow, nobody knows where the Argyle is. Now, oh. which pawnbrokers, Mitchells or Mr. Fleece? I'll tell you where the Argyle is if you tell me where my wife is. That's childish. Yeah? Well, she's not here. Mr. Fleece. Thank you. Mm. I want a glass of wine. <sighs> On behalf of the Marx family, can I apologise? Most maidservants. I'm not a maidservant. Oh, I'm not, I didn't say you were. I said most maidservants, isn't it? Most maidservants get a bed, time off, wages. Is it hell? Now, to be a maid in Germany, that would be hell. I hate that you're suffering because of me. And that I've influenced you at all. I'm an idiot. And everything that I say and do causes pain, suffering, and... Yeah. What? Death. Thousands of young men and women have died. And they died because they had read the manifesto. I killed them. And I'm killing you and Janet and Kiki and Fox. Why can't these young people just go out in the sun and have picnics and make love and drink at the well of their own serendipity and stop thinking about the injustice and suffering of others? Live, laugh and bloody thrive. And they want the book in Russia. That's dangerous, the Russians. They eat pickled beetroot and fuck their sisters. There's millions of them. We're not talking about Sussex. If I infect that lot with the virus of hope, there'll be perpetual conflict. I want to be ignored. But the truth can't be ignored. You want to know the truth? The enemy is pliable, elastic, shape-shifting. Greed is the most powerful elixir of all. Purified and strengthened in the hands of an elite that commands not just banks and the markets, but governments, whole states which must underpin and serve it. Capitalism is a seven-headed hydra that can't be killed. Kiss me. Let me finish this cigar. You wanted to tell me something earlier. But I can't tell you now. We're alone. Well, you might die tomorrow. <sighs> you should marry, hmm? An attractive, not a maid servant like well, you. Well, this is my life, and I like it. And it's not because I love you. Although I do. 
It's because I know who I am. It's a rich and purposeful life, and it's you who said... Oh, no, please, please, please don't quote me to me. (laughs) Nymphin. Kiss me. Don't call me Nymphin. You know what happened the last time. Nymphin. Kiss me. Jenny's not here. Well, she's not on a tour of Europe like last time. I might take a bullet tomorrow. Uh, don't play that card. It's contemptible. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm ashamed. But, you know. <laughs> I might take a bullet tomorrow. Have you had Max's wife in your room? I love her. She doesn't love me. But I saw her in your room. Go back and have her now in your room. She doesn't love me. I do not wish to be the, how you say, deuxième. Um, second. The second to a man who has had a beautiful woman in his rooms and has not had her one time. Two time. Three time. How you say? Four. Four time. If you have in your rooms, a noisette of you. A noisette of love. Juicy, aromatic, cooked to perfection. Do you leave it on a plate, alone, in your rooms? No, you eat it. Frau Marx is not a lamb chop. <laughs> now, come on. The sun will not wait. I will kill Marx. You do not need to kill Marx to have his wife. She is in your room. She doesn't love me. In France, it does not matter. (laughs) You are a man. She is in your rooms. You have to have her. Au contraire, I slept like a log. When I slay you, you will sleep to the end of eternity. I've no wish to die a pedant, but eternity has no end. (laughs) That is the unique and indeed defining quality of the concept of eternity. Monsieur, it is the duty of the seconds to explore an honourable resolution to the dispute. I've been called one, an idiot. Two, a fool, and three, a priapic Prussian prick. If you're struggling with the maths, put your hand up. A retraction can be made respectfully. I have no quarrel with you, Engel. Nor I with you. Comrade Marx has simply confused enemies and friends. And for that, he wishes to apologize. From his mouth. The apology and retraction must come from his mouth in supplication to me. Where's my wife? She is in his rooms. (laughs) Is this true? She is where she belongs. Monstrous, moronic, she's coming. I I will bite you. Hey, Billy. (laughs) We came here as gentlemen and we will fight as gentlemen. Come here, pistol. To your points, gentlemen. Seconds, prepare the weapons for those who duel. When you are ready, I will say, raise your pistols and fire. (laughs) What is it, Shram? I am here, sir. We are here, sir. Who are we? We. The editorial board of the Nunu Rheinische Zeitung. He's got a nose for a good story, I'll give you that. The 2nd of March, 1849, sir. What? A date 
etched on the heart of every revolutionary emigre who has ever put pen to paper, thought into word, word into voice in the cause of the overthrow of repressive regimes. Come, get out of the bloody way. Prussian soldiers came to your house, Herr Dr. Marx, to arrest the writer Ernst Browder, but you held the threshold of your home and propelled the power of the state. Trump, you're in the firing line. You are the revolution, sir. Its intellect, its spirit, its essence. The writers of the new, new line you should cite from have come to save you. Don't be a bloody fool, Trump. Get out of the firing line. Raise your pistols. One man. It is an honor. Fire! <coughs> Sweet mercy! dead no then why are you crying i'm allergic to the lack of furniture <laughs> look the general would never let a duel happen now come on school is mum or is her village no <sighs> what a tangle Look, an owl's nest. Will I go to prison? For what? We're his children. We're terrorists. It's not a crime to be his child. Without Daddy, how will we live? By breathing. London, I do not know. I pushed it all the way from Vienna. Hey, 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 hey. come on. Huh? Huh? Your very own Bosendorfer. Oh, and next year, uh, when you're a little older... A year older? Uh, we'll hold a soiree and invite lots of young Englishmen. And when they hear you play that little Mozart sonata, the richest and most handsome one will fall hopelessly in love with you and ask me if he can marry you and take you away to his castle on the Isle of Dogs. <laughs> the Isle of White. But I'll only be 11. <gasps> 11 years old and still bumming off your parents. Oh, stop teasing <laughs> her. She thought you were dead. Hegel, Hess and Feuerbach are stupider than Fichte is. In a competition, you could not tell who the victor is. Can't, 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 could rave and rant. But none of his ravings can detract from the brilliant Marx and Engels, Europe's favorite double act. Princess! I'll go pay the carter, shall I? It's amazing how much ready cash one needs when visiting the Marxes. Now that you are officially 
not dead. Saved, indeed. Might this be taken as a sign that you have a purpose? The economic shit. No definite article. Economic shit. What are the chances of you passing the economic stool? Now sit down or stand up and write the damn thing. Breakfast. Oh. We need breakfast. You are the emperor of procrastination. Doc Schmidt. Kiki, come on. What news of Schramm, Doc? Is he dead? I don't know. They arrested me and carried him away. You don't look arrested. I convinced them I was out taking my morning constitutional and not party to events, but I do have bad news. Schaffer has been arrested in Cologne. We have an informer in our midst. Was Billick arrested with him? Billick was not arrested. Indeed, he walked down the road with the police, shouting and laughing. Billick is Judas. Aristocracy, Prussian, Cologne, a military background, and he knows your wife's brother. But you're implicating my wife. Is she here? Well, you are. Someone has to speak out. The spy, my wife. Is Billick dead? She asked about her lover before her husband. I can see you're alive. <laughs> Villig lives. Unfortunately, the police turned up. We all ran. Mama! Kiki! How's my boy? I didn't come here for Foxy, comrades. Uh, Foxy's restless. Temperature? It was high, but it's come down. So, Jenny, do you have something to tell me? Yes. Change your shirt. We've had it on for three days now. Did you sleep with that Prussian flagpole of yours? Uh, Kiki, come here. What? No. She needs to know what her mother is. I'm here. Am I not? Did Shram find you? He was hit. Hit? In the head. You led that boy She'd to... rather I was dead. He worshipped you and you he let him... He took the pistol off me. The boys are fully paid up half-wit. Oh. There's more brains in a large saveloy. God, you can be heartless. The frozen waste that is my wife. Kiki! Oh, she's not stupid, are you, princess? You know, play your mother the funeral march. Cheer her up. I know Fur Elise. Fur Elise, perfect. A frivolous bagatelle. I like Tram. Is he dead, then? It looks that way. Let's not mourn the death of dunces. You know, Tram is dead and forgotten. But every cloud, silver lining. The new, new Rheinische Zeitung will have a new, new editor. Have you seen this side of him? It's ugly. Yeah, isn't the truth always? He didn't go to his father's funeral. Snitch! My father's a Calvinist Prussian tit on a horse, but I'll still be there at his funeral. Uncle! Nymph, lad. Kiki, play one of Mendelssohn's breakfast overtures. Moore, I need to speak to you. Alone. Uh, General, we need bacon, black pudding. You want me to go out and buy bacon so that you can talk about something in private with Nims? Yes. Kiki, uh, go to the shops and uh, help the General. Carry the bacon? What? Come on. I'll buy you some sherbet. Hello, what is it? I'm sorry, but you... Where's my money? Oh, he's had it all. Oh. General! I'm pregnant. You're pregnant? Yes. It was only last night. <laughs> Two months ago. Greenwich Park, remember? And are you saying that... Is this a lead, something? It can't be anyone else. No. Are you sure? I've never slept with anyone else. How would you know that? <laughs> because I would have had to have been there when it happened. And you'd remember something like that. <laughs> remember something like what? Uh, Nim says she's only ever been to Greenwich with us. Well, I've never been to Greenwich. But she exists outside of us. 
Yes, you could have been to any number of exotic destinations we wouldn't know about. <laughs> All right, I'm the father. Are you sure you're the mother? <laughs> What's going to happen? Here? You, me, Engels, Jenny, Kiki, Foxy, and your baby. Do I need to leave? Then what are we going to do? Two options. I can kill myself, or I can sit in a corner and rock like a bedlamite. Every time I open this door, you two stop talking. Daddy! Daddy! I'm many things, but I'm not Daddy. Are you all right? No. But I'm back. For good. For now. I hope it brought him to his senses. How was he last night? Oh, he was... more <laughs> Drunk. Thoughtful. But do you still love him? I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. Murder and my wedding vows. Half a pound of streaky with a hint of sherbet lemon. Excellent. I loathe the English, but I do understand one thing. The best things in life are fried. Mm. Sweets before breakfast. Oh, leave her alone. Her huh? father survived a duel. Cheeky! Eggs! Now, when I say egg, mm, you throw. Egg! Kiki, there's a fundamental difference in motivation between the chicken and the pig. Egg! What do you mean, Daddy? Vis a vis breakfast. The chicken is reasonably motivated. Egg! Involved, happy to be asked. Ah! But the pig is committed. Bacon throw. This all smells very good. Thank you very much, Mr. Engels. Oh, thank you, Mr. Engels, for the bacon. And the table and the chairs. And the piano. Yes, and the piano. That's all I need, a little love. Oh, a little love. Uh, if Uncle Freddy doesn't have a different woman every couple of days, he'll explode. What do you do with them, Uncle Freddy? <laughs> Tea. I have tea with different women in the afternoons because they like tea and I need tea. Kiki, it's a school day. Mama, I'm hungry, Daddy. Oh, certainly, Foxy. Now, would Sir like a cuddle with Squeeze or a cuddle with a tickle? Squeeze, don't tickle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just breathing. I am so hungry I could eat a horse, but this is not France. Do they eat horses in France? Do they eat horses in France for continental breakfast? Croissant, two hooves and jam. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it before us. What? Breakfast. Hmm? Look at that egg. Another epiphany. Mm. I don't know who laid that egg. Chickens lay eggs, Daddy, not People. Oh, oh, you just wait. Capitalism will soon have a manufactory churning out eggs by the thousand. Now, my point is that in earlier times, now in, say, the feudal era... In worse times, then. At least I knew who I was. Before capitalism, I could see my brother's hand in the labour content of my breakfast. Now, this sausage was metonymic of the social relations prevalent at that time. More, this is good, just write it down. A sausage could explain my life. Uh, your species essence. In its offal lies the explanation of who I am. It maps your social relations. And reminds me that I am connected to my fellow man. But then came capitalism. Uh. And its trusty dog, the money commodity. Woof, woof. Which destroyed all social relations. Providing no other point of contact other than cash. Wait, the cash? 
Unlike sausages. It can't tell me who I am. The cash does allow you to live with some dignity. It alienates me utterly. Alienate is a good word. Money prevents me from seeing my brother's labour. And if I can't see his labour, I can't see his life. All relations are commodified. Capitalism will even commodify the bones of the saints and render religion obsolete. Christmas will disappear into capitalism's foul gaping maw and be sicked up again, utterly commodified. We love Christmas! Oh, yeah. in ten years' time, Christmas will no longer be a day to celebrate Christ's birth, but a week-long festival of commodification. <laughs> a whole week and so universal and meaningless that even rabbis will be scoffing mince pies and snogging under the mistletoe. No. Who is it? It's me! Tram! Conrad! Oh! I'm not Tram! Hey, Dr. Marx! I, oh, I am dead! And then reborn! Oh, like Dionysus! Son of Zeus, I am torn to pieces and eaten by titans, but I have faced down Thanatos, and Rhea has brought me back to life, to live, write, talk, debate, and go on and on forever. It's bloody worse than before. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Come on out and give him a kiss. You selfish bastard. I am alive. Why? Uh, fate. Sweet mercy. Oh, your wit, sir, I am overjoyed to find is mercifully undiminished by your ordeal. Why aren't you dead? Oh, the bullet only grazed my temple. You told me Billick was a crack shot. Oh, his aim, I confess myself modestly grateful to report. On this singular occasion, fell somewhat below his customary standard of deadly perfection. Yeah. Or maybe, but I've already lined up a new, new editor for the title. Oh, if I may pick up on the elegant coattails of your epigram, might I perhaps presume to apologize profusely for not being dead? Apology not accepted. Uh, I am vested in wit once again by a master of that specialised craft. Piss in his face and he thanks you for the baptism. <laughs> I was beside myself with worry. Madame Moss, you do me by a very considerable degree too great a kindness. Have you eaten? No! I would not presume to impose upon your generous hospitality, but no, I haven't, thank you. You have the impertinence not to die, and then you eat my breakfast. I shall be in the reading room of the British Museum if you wish to send a written apology. But do not deliver it yourself. But he's working. He's actually gone to work. He's finally writing. Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, you are a genius. Minister of the Interior paid me. But you know where I'm going. I guess the British Museum reading room, where you'll read a very big, very heavy, difficult book standing up on account of your boils. You told them about my boils? A couple of sentences in the report, yes. They like detail. Who's betraying me? What? That Billy. I can't tell you, that'd be silly. Is it Billy? I just... Engels, Jenny, Nim, Doc Schmidt. Conrad Schramm. <coughs> Conrad? No, I just coughed. It can't be Conrad, he took a bullet for me. No, I've got a cold. Oh, excuse me, I mean... Give us one high. Emma, Emma! Emma! Wait for me! Why do you insist on making this difficult?
Can I help? Do I know you? <laughs> Are you interested in barnacles? The barnacles hasn't stuck to a ship, Barnacle. Yes? No. I have never been diverted from my life's purpose, Mick Barnacle. Then you're a fool. Because you are a barnacle. <laughs> Absolutely foolish, yes, Arba. I'm barnacle. We're all barnacles. Metaphorically. Literally. Oh. Are you not driven to understand who you are? I'm talking about the foundations of life. Oh, the origin of species. The origin of... Ooh. I like that. Can I have it? <laughs> I've no use for it. <laughs> do the man, do the man and barnacle share a mother? The barnacle took the low road. We took the high road. Also, ich bin ein barnacle. <laughs> Every day is a school day. More. Yes. Crisis. News from Cologne. Where? Cologne. Shh. The committee are arrested. Mo. Mo, Annika, the whole committee. Now, after chapel, we knew that would happen. I have a domestic problem. Mo, the entire central committee are in prison. And Nim has got a bun in the oven. And I'm the baker. <laughs> you fucked the maid! I cannot endorse this. I'm really incredibly sorry, Mrs. Biden. Uh, yeah, I apologize. Please. Sorry. You fucked the maid! Ah, this is a place of learning. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Please, uh, sir. You know what this means? Yes, nine months gestation, then a baby. You, Mon Brave, are going to have to take responsibility. <laughs> For what? I need you to say that you're the father. But you want everyone to think that I fucked the maid? You shush! For my marriage! For Jenny! For the movie! Are you insane? My enemies would destroy me with this. My reputation... What are my reputation? Oh, you don't have a reputation to defend fucking maids as your metier. Oh. <laughs> that is enough! Out! Both of you! Never! I will never agree to this! Never! Sir! Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry! Outrageous! Mrs. Whitehead, has the Reverend Clinkard finished with De Lacey's Almanac of Mollusks? When I get a moment, I'll have a look. Thank you. Yeah, it was a typical library brawl. You know. <laughs> Somebody threw a punch at my friend, so as you do, I went in. You wanted to talk to me. <laughs> but 
the thing is, and it, it, it's not entirely straightforward, this thing, but it is a thing that can be managed wonderfully successfully, in fact, with other things being a part of it. And those things will fall into place as things happen, making the thing itself a more than passable thing. What, my baby? Is the thing we're talking about. You bastard. What, you know? He knows. No, I never wanted to cause pain between you and Jenny. Yes, no, I understand. I love Jenny like a sister, but I can't deny my feelings. Is that wrong? It's, it's a valid question, full of validity. And I'm my love is not illegitimate. Unlike the baby. <laughs> you, you must have the child. Our child. <laughs> the general here has agreed with unselfish altruism to be the, um, you know, to the child. Oh, Godfather! <laughs> well, thank you! You bastard! The father. What? He's always quite like you. you. Absolute bastard! I realise that this might not be exactly what you had in mind, Nim. Oh, what incredible insight into womankind you have! Are my political enemies to be given the gift of my social ignominy? Well, is that what our child means to you? Social ignominy. Ignominy, scandal, humiliation? Let's not split hairs. The movement, the revolution, these are our true children. I think I just threw up a bit in my mouth. <laughs> the child will officially be the general. Now, he will make provision for the foster parents, and we will find good people. You bastard! I'm married, Nim. The revelation of a child born out of wedlock would ruin me. You absolute bastard! No one is going to believe that the general is father to my child! They will! You have been seduced by the great seducer. Du bist wirklich ein Tod auf Recht, Gott, Gott, Unter, Hose und Scheißer, Schwanz, im Elitischer Feigling! That's all agreed then? <laughs> Jenny. Okay. You two. Into the bedroom. Come in! On your own? They're at the Gilbert. Oh, Kiki's friends. Yes. Foxy loves Mrs. Gilbert. And she feeds him up. But uh, don't think... He's not coughing, otherwise I wouldn't have left him. All right. I trust you. Guess who's been round? Who? The general. Where is he? Do you need to ask? Are you going to tell me? Do I really have to? Do you really want to? Came round like a love-struck teenager. <laughs> Powered by a heady mixture of infatuation and anticipation. You think I want to be here? You really think I want to be here? <laughs> Mary Burns is here. No. Come on. You hardly need me to tell you the identity of the... Holy reciprocating recipient of his amour. Two things he takes, two things. Ah. This one, this one really does seem to be la grande passion. <laughs> Who has he got in there? Nothing. Nim. Him and him. Nim and him. He and me. <laughs> when you think about it, it's obvious. No, it isn't. <laughs> they don't particularly like each other. I know I was shocked initially. <laughs> I thought Nim with him. No. Well, maybe more him with Nim to begin, but no. Nim was as into him as he into Nim. And they're... In there. I couldn't stop them. Took the opportunity with the kids out the house. Like two young lovebirds. Yeah, or rabbits. <laughs> or in season mink. Oh, 
lively. <laughs> a little bit presumptuous in our house, but uh, I guess we're all adults. <laughs> you know, they are really good together. You two. <laughs> Welcome back. Hello, Nim. Hello, Jenny. Hello, General. Hello, Jenny. Ah, this is nice. Drink. And it's a bit early, I know, but uh, I think we've got some quite acceptable scotch that the general brought. Well, Ma was just telling me that, that you... The, uh, that, no, that the two of you were, uh, were both, both together, both as a, as a couple. And, uh, <laughs> well, it wasn't a bit of a surprise, but, uh, but also very lovely for the, for the two of you, lovely people, to be together as a lovely couple. I had no idea. Uh -huh. uh, it was obvious to me. Well, when did you two first start? Uh, general, um, uh, ladies first, I know, but, uh, Freddie, it was, um... Oh, it was definitely more than eight weeks ago. <laughs> eight weeks and two days ago. And Nim, you felt the same? No. What? No, my feelings... went back further. I was attracted to a man that... I had admired for more than 10 years. Oh, sweet. <laughs> and General, you felt the same? Similar, yep, along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> what more joyous than celebrating love between two people? Ah, oh, what more? Unless there was something more or, or additional to celebrate on top of it. <laughs> or with it. Or connected in some way, <laughs> or as a result. Well, I'm pregnant? No, I was not expecting that. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful news. Oh, Nimshin, how are you feeling? Terrible. Me too. <laughs> Morning sickness. Yes. <laughs> Sympathetic pains, uh, the true mark of love. How long now? Eight weeks and two days. <laughs> what did you cry? Well, this is happy news. Oh, yes, yes, I'm very happy. We both are. I need to lie down. Yes, of course, come into the bedroom. Happy Daddy. Thanks a lot. I mean, you really entered into the spirit of that. You absolute bastard. You know, there is a really cynical side to you sometimes. <laughs> Well, she's wrung out the emotions, but she's settled now. Some women would be pretty annoyed that their maid had got pregnant, General. Not this woman. <laughs> Wife, mother, not my mother, <laughs> secretary, amanuensis. Oh, oh, you bastard! I am disappointed in you, General! Yes, I'm disappointed in myself! Ah, yes. I thought I'd been here earlier. Mr. Engels, uh, good to see you again, Sergeant. Where is he? Charles Marks. Oh, leveling his head. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Marks! Now, how can I put this? Um, Mr. Charles Marks. You're arresting me on suspicion of the theft of an argyle. That's good. Will it harm my defence if I fail to mention anything when questioned, which I later rely on in court? Don't know. Then I shall assume that anything I do say will be used against me in evidence. Assume away, mate. The Argyle is a family heirloom, a wedding present. Also, it is mine and hers. This is true, madam. Mine Argyle is missing, and I do not know this man. <laughs> Hey, 
argument is entirely mystical and idealistic, whereas my dialectic is the antithesis, rooted in a materialistic view of man's situation. So, as a man without economic autonomy, utterly alienated from my brother worker and suffering grinding poverty, I decided to nick a solid silver gravy warmer. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, sign here. <laughs> Lads, hurry up. None of us are getting any younger. Ah, uh, the beak will have fun with that. Stand there. What are these two in for? Dueling. Yesterday morning on the Heath, arrested at Charing Cross. Today, trying to leg it. Name? Je suis Francais. How'd you spell that, then? I am French. You're French? No. Well, don't lie to the police, then, son. He's French! Good. He'll be impressed by the plumbing. Uh. <laughs> August Willig. Marx, what are you doing here? Discussing dialectical materialism with Constable Singe. I am arrested for dueling. I don't believe a word of it. Cell 11, at the end. Come on, lads, follow me. 11. Onze! You do not have to count to 11, don't you, Willick? Five fingers on each hand make 10, and then get your cock out. Why do you not believe my word that I'm arrested? Because Shuffler's arrested in Cologne. And, and you, you think that I'm the informer? You don't know yourself, Marx. You need your rival in love to be your Judas. Life would be so much simpler for you that way, but unfortunately for you, I am a man of honour, true to our cause, and I am arrested. Well, see, yeah. Doc Schmidt, Schmidt. You never see the lies you believe. Milados, bail. Right, come on. I will dig a tunnel, comme un blaireau. Eh? I will dig a tunnel like a shaving brush. And then I will escape. Pendant votre petit déjeuner. And then I will escape into your breakfast. <laughs> right, that's it. I've had enough of this babble. Chop, chop. I have to tell you, I do not eat shellfish. <laughs> Rich friends, eh? How did you arrange bail? Circumstances. Circumstances. Folksy. What happened? He's gone. I'm sorry. Gone? What gone? No. No. Not gone. He didn't oh. wake this morning. He died in the night. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Was Doc Schmidt there when Folksy died? No. Remember when we nicked the cake? More. Folksy is dead. Doc Schmidt was with us, wasn't he? What? He knew about the Argyles. What are you talking about? It looks right. It's Doc Schmidt. More, you must bury your son. Jenny needs you. I will not take a lesson in family from you. More! <laughs> Advantage. I should kill you. Oh, kill me later. Let's have a whiskey. Eh? Give me the argyle. <laughs> well, even if I have what you say I have, which I don't admit, I have to return it to its rightful owner. <laughs> Fox is dead. I'm sorry. Are you? I am a doctor. I treated his symptoms correctly with borax administered with honey. It wasn't me that killed him, you A friend, I serve Prussia. Oh. Who controls it? <laughs> Jenny's brother, Minister von Westphalen, sent me to break up the league and return the family silver and destroy my family. You've got the Argyle now. Let me go. You killed Foxy. You can't do it, Marx. You're not a soldier. No!
From Arx, I have a baptism to get to. Oh, please, my husband is still not here. <sighs> yes, but I... Pastor Flynn, please, may we have just one more minute? He'll come. I don't know him. He considers the dead lucky. To his own son's funeral. He doesn't do funerals. He won't even go to his own. We really need to begin. Oh, yeah, I apologize. It appears that my husband is indisposed. You may speak to the child before I give the dedication. Would you like me to say something? I'll try. Born on Guy Fawkes night in 1847. My son, Guido Fawkes, he marks, I shall live your life for you so that you suffer no more. Bronchitis, measles, croup, colic. Uh, the dens in the woods, the horses, the fights, the dances, the games, the swimming in the sea, the roast dinners, sandcastle, picnics. Snowball fights, fighting, campfires, tree houses, girls, love, no, no that he had oh, safe. Oh, oh, not now, Sham. I wished to pay my respects to one who knew too little of the world, <clears throat> one robbed by untimely time of his place at life's feast. Comrade. Yes, sir. I know, sir, that I am prone to prolixity. My life has become a quest for brevity. This is a child's funeral. So I will convey my secondary purpose in attending upon this ceremony with uncharacteristic economy. What happened? Uh, Dr. Marx has curtailed the egregious and nefarious machinations of a traitor. Frau Marx, please, we must complete the search. Oh, yeah, Doc yeah. Schmidt is the informer. Herr Dr. Marx wounded the cur, and it was whilst the dog was in hospital that we found about his person plans to arrest the further 20 comrades across Europe. They have been forewarned, and that is why Dr. Marx is not here. Are you the father? May we continue? Yes. Did you dig, dig, dig this grave? Aye, sir. Thank you. What a fine grave it is. Join us. Sir? No one should be ashamed of their working clothes. We give thanks to God for the deceased and commend the remains to God's care. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not even enough, enough, enough. My son has no need of your stories. The only truth here is our pain. Please leave us with that. Jenny, have you spoken? Yes. He needs to hear your voice. Yes. Foxy? Son, I'm here. It's your father. Late, yeah, but you knew I'd be late. And for that, I ask for your forgiveness. You were my son. And an Englishman. And we bury you today. In the soil of your mother country. And you take your rightful place with their great men. Wat Tyler. Henry Hunt. Thomas Paine. Oliver Cromwell. And William Shakespeare. Comrade Dunn is shouting. I should have dug your grave as a punishment, as penance for the pain I caused you. But that would have been easy and selfish. I'll fill it in. And this labor is the gift that I give you. Thank you, come. 
चलो ठीक है I killed him. Stop it. If I'd stop it, I could have got a job. On the railway. Why not? That was never an option. It works for everybody else. And those people, they don't have to sacrifice their children. Everything we've ever done, we've done together. We haven't done anything yet. Do you forgive me for Nim? No. Good, that's good, that's clear. We know where we are on that one. I forgive you. For what? That's right, you haven't done anything, have you? <laughs> I take it back, I don't forgive you. Oh, more don't try and make me laugh. Oh, Foxy. Oh, what are we going to do? Me and your mother. To honour you. Carry on. Yes, that's me. I am still here. For which, I apologize. I'll stay for dinner, your family. We love you. Nim. I didn't say anything. Have some more wine. What is this? Uh, did you put the wine in the gravy warmer? Well, someone has to find a use for it. <sighs> now. Oh, an official announcement. <laughs> I am afraid to say that I have decided to abandon you all. I'm going back to Manchester. You hate Manchester. I've written to my father. Oh, please, could I have my job back? You've just taken rooms in Soho. You're probably going to be a cotton. I'm lord. going to send you a five pound note every week. And where are you going to get this five pound note? I shall steal it from the cash box at Airmen and Engels, risking dismissal every day from either Airmen or Engels. Your Engels. Well, then I might just get away with it. And I'm going to do this partly because I believe that his writings will forward the progress of humankind, but more importantly, because there is some other poor soul out there more in need of the job of railway clerk at Paddington Station. <laughs> Marks and Engels. Uh, Engels and Marks. Thank you, Freddie. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, Jenny, you were going to ask me a question. Oh, yes. As a cotton lord yourself, capitalist, <laughs> capitalism is dead labour that vampire-like lives only by sucking living labour. And lives the more, the more labour it sucks. I thought this was supposed to be a book on political economy, not a penny dreadful. It was two sucks in one sense. One sucking and one suck. It's a bit bloody bloodthirsty. Well, it's an accurate metaphor. The capitalist is vampiric, a bloodsucker. Yeah, you paid a worker a shilling and he creates three shillings value. But your vampire sucked two shillings surplus value. Yeah. Labour is different from other commodities. It has the capacity to create a value greater than its own value. That is the only reason to buy it. 
That is where capitalism is antithetical to natural justice. Well, so the capitalist pays one shilling for something that he knows to be worth three shillings. And you give no share in the surplus created. You're a vampire! I don't start till Monday. <laughs> but why does the worker agree to the unjust exchange? He has to eat. And pay the rent? No! Because there's someone who will work for less. Thank you, Nim. Surplus value is the modern battleground. And collective capital versus collective labour. This battle will write the history of man in the next century. Uh, where's my wine then? Is he allowed to drink and bring down capitalism at the same time? Yes. Lachaim uh. zum Wohl. So he's sticking with sucking vampires. Yes. This isn't work. I'll piss off. Jenny, he's hiding something. It's a private letter. There is nothing private in here. We're communists. Shipper? Japan to Polish. List. List. Hungarian. Human. German. Attention, c'est fini, the secret letter thing. King. Read it. Out loud. Please. <clears throat> my dearest Jenny, I shall be martyred for my philosophy. Traduced, vilified, defamed. I care not because my purpose on this earth is to love you. There have been poets, braggards all, who facetiously have rhymed a greater love, but they were ignorant of my heart. Had they looked inside it, they would have stepped aside and handed me the quill of course, I failed you. I looked away to another, but you embraced her without judgment. And that is why I shall always be unworthy of you. But if there is anything good and pure in me, it is yours. Your loving husband, more. I'll, I'll get him for you. It becomes the unique job of the money commodity. I don't like unique jobs. Yeah, it's not a job, is it? Special social function. How about she writes Das Kapital and we just put your name on it? It becomes the special social function of the money commodity. And consequently, it's social monopoly to play within the world of commodities the part of the general substitute. Oh, I don't like general substitute. Uh, universal exchange? Universal substitute? Universal equivalent. Money as the universal equivalent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.